Welcome to Thinking Bi- uh, Welcome to Thinking Biblically. This is the 14th day of November in the year of our Lord 2023. Just a update on the situation on the West Bank in Jerusalem on the Temple Mount. Alaska. Well, what can I say? A Netanyahu and his uh, right-wing extremists continue their provocation. They are obviously going for broke. This is not about Hamas. This is about the liquidation or removal, the draining away, shall we say, of the Palestinian people. And uh, let's take a look at a short look at this video, which is uh, six minutes and ten minutes, uh, six minutes, ten seconds long. It's put out. The titles are is uh, in English and Arabic. I can't read the Arabic, but Jews entered El Aska Mosque today, fourteen hours ago. Have, uh, let's see. Let me bring this up on the screen so you can see where it is if you care to go there. Okay, where am I doing? What am I doing here? Here we go. So here, that's the title. Jews entered El Aska Mosque today. Hafiz Kashif Mahmoud. 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 I don't know how to pronounce that exactly. Um, yeah. So let's take a look at this video. And then I'll make a few comments on some things. Okay, what you see in the background, this is the uh, the platform, the area between, well, the area north of El Aska Mosque proper, which is on the very southern edge of the Temple Mount in the area that's known as the Portico of Solomon in the Bible, it is the expansion of the the hill that the temple was built on uh, by Herod the Great, in, because he built a, a a colonnade in that area, and the Wailing Wall, which is below it on the west side, is the retaining wall, a portion of the retaining wall built by Herod the Great to expand the Temple Mount, so he could put the wall in and then backfill it to create a larger platform. Uh, so that's what it is here. Let's see. Here, here we have, so you've got uh, Israeli police authority or something, Israeli authorities here. This is a an area that's restricted to Muslims only normally. Others are allowed up there as sort of guests. It's supposed to be under the Waqf, the Muslim authority that controls this site. And here in the background, you have uh, some assortment of of, of uh, Jewish people here under very heavy police protection. I would say it's about one to one. This is a relatively small group. This is not nearly, I mean, uh, in the week before, this is a very small example of what happened the week before the 7th. During Sukkot, literally uh, a thousand or more at a time invaded El Aska um, compound, the, the Temple Mount itself. The whole thing is considered El Aska. And uh, it is a Muslim holy site. It's not a Jewish holy site. Uh, in fact, the uh, rabbi, uh, rabbinate, the uh, Jewish religious authorities in Jerusalem, uh, has, still has, I believe, but did have when I was there warning sites, warning signs that told it was, uh, the Jews it was unlawful for them to come onto the Temple Mount because it's holy and there are places that they cannot go because of the holiness of God. See, you could not enter the Temple, for example, without a sacrifice. Uh, no, <laughs> it's, it wasn't a place to have a picnic. So this is, uh, uh, well, let's watch some more. Uh, that was gunfire, by the way. 
I'm going to guess it was probably riot guns uh, shooting tear gas or maybe con concussion grenades. Uh, the security is actually much larger than this. This is just the, the um, police. Uh, <laughs> that are guarding the uh, the group of Jewish trespassers. Again, this is, they're not invited. These are uninvited gifts. These are occupiers. It's like somebody walking into your home with a bunch of goons uh, just strolling around without you inviting them in. <laughs> Uh, you notice they're carrying riot helmets. Okay, so this, why are these Jews here? There is no real reason for them to be on the Temple Mount at all. No reason at all. Again, the traditional place of Jewish prayers in Jerusalem is down, let's see, it would be, now it would be behind us, uh, the Western Wall, I believe, would be in a different direction. Not quite oriented here. Okay, I, I believe they're proceeding toward, okay. Let me see, where are we? Okay, so here, on the right side here, this is El Aska Mosque proper, which is on the very southern edge of the Temple Mount. I believe this is the north side. So right now we're looking basically south, southeast. That would be the corner over there. Yeah. So that's uh, the Mount of Olives would be way off to the to the left of the screen across the uh, Kidron Valley. Oh, see there, somebody launched a, looks like a concussion grenade. Yep, that's what it was. Stun grenade. It wasn't tear gas. In the background, they're they're shouting, uh, "God is great." Allah Akbar. <clears throat> so there, you see the full the full extent of them right there. There's it looks like a little over a dozen, and probably quite a few more uh, security than that. Why? 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 Why are they there? There, there you can see the mosque, the uh, silver dome, which is on the rear of the mosque in the background. Of course, the, uh, the moon, the Muslim symbol is on the top. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, that is definitely looking due south there. So that so behind back of us from this point of view behind me someplace is the dome of the rock. Uh, there's a fairly large place between the two. Oops. My mistake. Let's uh, pick up our position again. Hit the wrong button. Relatively peaceful. Um, okay, so just off to the right of the screen there, you saw it briefly, is the Dome of the Rock. Let me, I'll... Stop it when we see that. Okay, uh, the very right corner there is 
the facade of the Dome of the Rock, which is not a mosque. It is a um, pilgrimage site, a shrine, and it, uh, in the middle of it, I've, I, wasn't, I did not go inside when I was there. I was not willing to take my shoes off and go inside. Uh, not important, but there's a, an outcrop of rock that is believed by Muslims to be the site that Muhammad ascended into heaven on a winged horse in a night vision. So, so he was he physically here? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't actually specify in the Quran where it took place. They just say the far place. And because probably because Muhammad began his his career as a prophet praying toward Jerusalem, and then later cha changed it to, to Mecca. Apparently, God changed his mind. Allah changed his mind about where you're supposed to pray toward. Hmm, sounds pretty human to me. Now, see, the, the very presence of armed Israeli police on the Temple Mount is provocative. Uh, this, this is, you know. Hmm. Do I see? Do I see like a stone in that that man's hand right there? It might be. Maybe not. Probably not. No, don't think so. Yeah, this is so we. You've just seen the uh, the entire expanse between the, the mosque and the the shrine, the Dome of the Rock. So let's let me take this back here. Give you a, a good look at it. See, there there is uh, there is the Dome of the Rock. It's, it's raised up a bit from this, and here's the the mosque. And right now we're looking uh, north, which is, no, excuse me, we're looking west, which is where they entered from, I believe. Okay, that's enough of that. That's enough of that. Um, all right, so what was this all about? Why is Israel, see, this is stuff went on on a much larger scale the week before the 7th of October during the Jewish Holy Week of Sukkot. Um, a, th a thousand or more at a time was coming up here under considerably more police presence on the uh, Dome of the Rock, uh, the, the Temple Mount site, the the whole platform here, which is called el uh, Again, according to the Law of Moses, which the Jews do not keep at all, nor can anybody keep, because it requires perfect obedience, otherwise you're under the curse. Uh, its purpose is not to save people, its purpose is to, con to condemn people, to show people that they're sinful, and no more than that. It cannot do more than that, which is why Jesus came. The law was only meant as a temporary thing, until the Messiah would come. And he came 2,000 years ago and departed and is coming again. So here, uh, they're, the Jews, what they're doing is they, they continue to claim this mount by enga engaging in these armed, um, what shall we call it? Forays. Uh, expeditions, basically they're claiming the property and they're saying, we're going to come and build our temple here and you people are going to be gone. It's a, it's a claim to the property and they're, they're continuing to do this. Uh, Israel, is the, with complete consent, now Israel didn't use to allow this stuff. 
com because they didn't want trouble. So this is with the complete uh, consent of the Netanyahu government, probably the plan of the Netanyahu government, with especially Ben Gavir. So th they keep doing this to uh, normalize a Jewish presence on the top of the mount and to provoke the Palestinians, to pr provoke the Muslims, the mu Muslims around the world. So why would they dare do this? Why do they deliberately provoke the Muslims on their holy site? The traditional site of the Jews for prayer is the Wailing Wall, the Western Wall, which is below this to the, uh, to the western side of this mountain. Why? Because they want to provoke them. They're looking for more reasons to justify more suppression, more ethnic cleansing, more genocide. That's why. And the thing is, in spite of October 7th, they're making a statement, we're not impressed. We're not afraid of you. We're not afraid of the Muslim world. We can do whatever we want, and there's nothing you can do about it. <sighs> Which is what Netanyahu is doing in Gaza right now. I'm afraid the, uh, whatever Trump's motives, I'm afraid his Abraham Accords demonstrated to Netanyahu and to Israel one thing, is that the Arab nations, the Muslim nations around here, are much more interested in their own self-interest and cutting a deal than they are the Palestinian people. Because the Abraham Accords were basically, just forget about the Palestinians. Just make peace on your own. Forget the Palestinians. It's to your, to your advantage, to your benefit, to forget the Palestinians. And I think uh, that's what Netanyahu realizes. The, the, the Muslims, they're very uh, unlikely to do anything because they were willing to throw the Palestinians under the bus in order to sign off on the Abraham Accords. Not all of them did, but enough that Israel says, hey, they're not willing to fight and die for the Palestinians. We can just buy them off. Take some American money and give to them. American weapons, whatever. We'll just buy them off because they demonstrated with the Abram Accords that they're not really that concerned about uh, Palestinians and the injustice of the Nakba. They don't care. It's not their problem. They don't want it to be their problem. They want to serve themselves. Humanity, sinful humanity, that's what sinful people do. So now Israel thinks, hey, we can get away with everything. We can keep pushing and pushing and pushing and use it as an excuse for more genocide. And nobody's really going to do anything about it. Even Hamas up there just sitting there and they're poking here and there, but they're not really doing anything about it. We can do whatever we want. The Americans whine a little bit, but that's all they're going to do is whine a little bit because they really don't care. They don't like the Palestinians anyway. And after 9-11, most Americans do not like Muslims at all. The memories of 9-11 and then the hostage crisis in uh, Iran. Yeah, most Americans could care less. They'd like to see them all wiped out, too. They don't care for it. Not interested. Americans are selfish people, like all people are. They were willing to exterminate the Native Americans. Why their land? Maybe that's why Israel and the United States are so close partners in genocide. Now, the, American, the genocide of the American Indians was a little different. A little different. The genocide of the Palestinians is worse. The, uh, after all, America was not a densely populated place. It was pretty empty. Even before the, the great pandemics that were caused by the the arrival of Europeans, they brought their diseases with them and 
They spread far and wide. It wasn't a plan. They did not understand epidem uh, epidemiology. They did not understand what caused diseases at all. So don't try to con think it was a conspiracy. They didn't know enough to conspire to do it. Not generally, at least. There was a report of them, some of the Puritans sharing uh, contaminated blankets from people that had, what was it? I can't, uh, can't remember the disease they had, but of course they didn't really understand the cause of this stuff. They might have known that contact with materials from people that were sick could cause things to spread, but their knowledge was very basic or non-existent. So. Plus, the, uh, the genocide in the United States was more of your in our way. Well, I guess that's pretty much the same. But, uh, yeah, it was bad. But again, it was, uh, it was uh, usually it was not conducted the way this is going on in Gaza. Although there was cases like the Sand Creek Massacre. I guess uh, I guess October 7th was the Palestinian equivalent to Custer's last stand. But Israel is going to keep going. They're not going to be deterred. They, they're demonstrating here in this little event that they're not going to listen to anybody. They're going to go full steam ahead and do whatever they want unless they're stopped by force. And I think they're correct, they've correctly discerned that Egypt and Jordan and Syria and Iraq and Lebanon, even Hezbollah and Saudis, the Saudis are not willing to put their own skins on the line for the Palestinian people. They demonstrated that by the, the Abraham Accords. Now the only hope the Palestinians have is God Almighty. Because nobody else is going to help them. God, save the Palestinians.